So today I went to the drugstore to look for an antacid. I wanted to see if they had a, a special remedy in that section. And the remedy is zinc carnosine, and I could not find it anywhere. In fact, I couldn't even find it under the vitamin section, which is shocking because zinc carnosine is the cure for ulcers. That's probably because it's pretty cheap. I mean, I think it's probably less than $10 a bottle. So today I'm going to talk about the mechanism of why zinc carnosine fixes an ulcer. And I have a lot of experience with this because in college, I had severe uh, heartburn and ulcers, and I didn't know what to do, and I was suffering. So what I did is I just took massive amounts of Tums, which is chalk. Three hours later, I started to hurt again, and this cycle happened over and over and over. Taking tons of antibiotics or antacids doesn't really heal the problem. So the main treatment for an ulcer is an antibiotic. Why? Because fairly recently, they discovered that the cause of ulcers is a bacteria called H. pylori, but they also use an H2 inhibitor, H standing for histamine, which I'm going to explain in a little bit. But I think most of the medical profession initially thought that an ulcer was really just too much acid, right? Well, now we know it's a breakdown of the mucus layer around part of your stomach or the small intestine. And now you have this open wound and it can be infected. Let's break down this zinc carnosine. So when you take this zinc carnosine, it's a pretty stable compound that doesn't really break down too easily. So it kind of stays in the stomach and it kind of coats the area, but it eventually breaks down into zinc and carnosine. Carnosine then breaks down into L-histidine. It's the amino acid that turns into histamine. Now, this is very confusing for a lot of people because when you think of histamines, you think of antihistamine, a medication that you'd use for allergies or mucus. Histamine actually is released in the cells of the stomach that make hydrochloric acid. And histamine helps regulate that hydrochloric acid. It actually helps increase that hydrochloric acid. So when you take an H2 blocker, you're basically blocking the production of histamine and you're lowering the amount of acid production in the stomach. Now, let me just switch gears to this H. pylori. H. pylori is in probably 80% of the population and it's pretty harmless. It doesn't really do anything until the environment in your stomach changes. Then it starts to penetrate and uh, create a hole in your stomach. What it does is it releases this enzyme to help increase more production of ammonia. And so what this microbe is doing, it's changing the pH of your stomach, making it less acid. And so it can survive, right? This is a survival mechanism. So make mental note of that because when you lose the stomach acid, you're more susceptible to having H. pylori infections. Now, I wonder if that's one reason why H. pylori comes out of remission and creates damage in the first place. But the significance of this is that zinc blocks the enzyme that H. pylori is putting out there. It stops the production of ammonia. So your stomach could be more acid. So the combination of zinc stopping this ammonia production and this increase of histamine increasing more acid is automatically going to cause that microbe to go back in remission and stop creating a hole in your stomach. Zinc is also antibacterial and zinc also increases the production of that mucus in your stomach, that protective layer. Now, I did mention that carnosine breaks down into two additional things, okay? One being histidine, which is the precursor for histamine, but another one is called beta alanine. What does beta alanine do? Well, it increases something called SOD, which is an antioxidant. So it's going to help reduce inflammation and it also supports the intestinal barrier. So you can imagine this L carnosine is like the perfect remedy to do a lot of things to help heal an ulcer and decrease gastritis as well. Now, there's a couple other interesting things about L carnosine from a genetic standpoint. There is a certain type of uh, genetic defect, be a polymorphism, which can put the person at risk for getting an ulcer. So if someone has an ulcer, autism, 
or Tourette's or any tics, I would also recommend zinc carnosine. Now, how much zinc carnosine uh, should you take? Well, I would recommend taking about 150 milligrams per day, broken up into two times a day. So you take 75 milligrams in the morning, 75 milligrams in the evening, and that should be enough. You'd want to take that for about one to three months. However, it doesn't work as fast as the medication. So what you might want to do is to use baking soda, okay, to kind of decrease the pain. And there's some other things you can do as well. You can take liquid chlorophyll on an empty stomach. Chlorophyll is a great healer, and it can definitely help not just with an ulcer, but also if there's irritation in your esophagus, it'll just kind of go down and heal any type of lesions that you might have. Once you correct this ulcer, now the question is, how do we prevent this problem from ever coming back? Well, for that, you need a little knowledge on the stomach and stomach acid, and I have this video for that information.